stuff is how we like to communicate our thoughts and feelings, stories that can make you relate. And we talked to some cool people we met on the way. So thanks for tuning in. We hope that you like your stay. Hey, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Mel. Hey, I'm Erica. And welcome to another episode of Girl Stuff Podcast. Today we are joined by our favorite, one of our favorite TikTokers, Erica Anderson. <laughs> Erica, instead of me giving an introduction on who you are, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? For sure. Okay. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Erica Anderson. I am an actress and a content creator. Um, I met these lovely ladies um, over the span of the Julie and the Phantoms premiere last year, and we've been kind of keeping up with each other's journeys ever since. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do a lot of content creation on TikTok and YouTube, and I have been acting and auditioning since 2013. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get a little bit into more about you and what you do, what is one thing that you did during quarantine that otherwise you wouldn't have had time to do? I honestly want to say diving more into the business side of acting. Um, I feel like as actors and anybody that wants to get into enter the entertainment industry, whether it's acting, um, being a podcaster, modeling, whatever the case may be, it's hard to kind of sit down and figure out what do I need to do to kind of further my career um, versus just kind of going on go, go, go for auditions, auditions, and not really understanding like the back end of stuff like that, like contracts, who to talk to if you have an issue, who to talk to when you want to elevate your career. Um, so I've been blessed enough to be a part of um, the Hollywood Winter Circle, which is with my mentor, Wendy Elaine Bright. I've been training with her really closely for this past year. And if it wasn't for quarantine, because I, I was still in school at the time, I was finishing out my senior year of college, and I was really involved in school before the quarantine. And you know, I was a resident advisor. I was working two on-campus jobs. When I when I say it back, I'm like, when, am I even human sometimes? Because I was just like, when did I have the time to even do half of the things that I did? Um, but I was just doing so much in school. And so being kind of rerouted, because I stayed at home the whole time and just went completely online, I was able to kind of get into my regular classes for my academics. And then right after I would jump into like Zoom calls with different like casting directors and agents and stuff like that. And so it's just been a roller coaster ride since last summer, honestly. I think that's when everything kind of started, summer of 2020. Busy, busy. <laughs> yes. Before we start talking about acting and everything that you do, we decided to play a fun little game with you called Song Association. <laughs> Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prompt you with a word and then you have to sing or tell me a lyric with the word in it. So, for example, if I said the word mess, Hannah, what would you say? Oh, I'm a mess right now. Inside out. <laughs> okay, I got you. I got you. Incredible. <laughs> okay, the first word that I have for you is a thousand. Baby, we're 10,000 miles away. I don't even know if that's how Emblem it goes. Three. Emblem 3, yes. Oh my God. I was obsessed with X Factor back when they oh, were no. in it, like 2013, 14. And I wanted to sing a thousand miles. No. Was that what yeah. I wanted to sing? A thousand yeah. years. The, do, 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 do. Yo, yes, yes. A bunch of thousand songs just kind of came to my mind. It's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> That's okay though. I, I thought Evelyn 3 is like my small little no one knows no, about them. I love my. Great. I don't even remember what their song. They're, the song that kind of broke them out. They had a really big one. It was Chloe. like Chloe. Oh, Chloe. Yes, that was the Chloe one. Too, yeah. Yes. <laughs> love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. Next word is pizza. Oh, pizza. Phoning a friend, phoning a friend. Okay, have you ever seen Camp Rock 2? Yes. Oh, it's in the song Nick Jonas' character sings. I never trust a dog to watch my food. And I liked, oh, okay, okay. And I, wait, oh, something like, um, oh my gosh, what, I never trust it. Wait, no, that's the second verse, isn't it? I think that's, that's the, the second, second verse. verse. That's the oh, right yeah. song, though. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's going to kill me if I don't get it. Hold on. Yeah, no, I lost it. <laughs> I like cheese. I like cheese. 
but only on pizza, please. Yeah. It's sometimes on a homemade quesadilla. Okay, got it. Got it. There you go. <laughs> okay, the next word is try. You gotta get up and try and try and try. Try by pink. Okay, okay. I was like, who sings that song? <laughs> You're doing amazing. Like I'm you're surprised. killing these words. I'm so surprised. <laughs> okay, the next word is never. Living on a nee, nee, nee. oh my gosh, what is it? What is it? What? All oh, how how how? This is literally my life. What is going on? Now or never. Now or never. This is why I'm not in a band, y'all. This is why my music <laughs> career cut short. <laughs> now or never. Sunset curve. Yes. Okay, the next word is queen. Queen, like queen? Yes. Yes. Calling me the queen of mean. And yes. from, um, from Descendants 3, yes, yes. yes. Y'all know I love my Disney. Such a bob. <laughs> Loved that one. Yes. yes. Uh, such a bob. Okay, the next word is lonely. Um, lonely. Ooh, I might have to phone a friend. Justin Bieber. It's on his new album, or old, one of his newest albums. There's gonna be one less lonely girl. I'm coming to you, one <laughs> less lonely girl. <laughs> she went with the throwback. She's the like, we're going back in time. <laughs> I'm surprised I, I remember like that. that. Me too, like actually. The first time no one sang Lonely the song by, Justin Lonely, by Justin Bieber. Oh, oh. What? He has a song I'm Lonely? so low. Oh. Lonely. That makes me so sad. <laughs> but you know what? You got one less lonely girl, and I think that's a better option in my opinion. Yes, really. <laughs> uh, he's okay, still my heart the, with next, that. the next word is anyone. Oh, 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 no, wrong song. Wait, in my head, I think I'm just a music store. Give me a second. Um, oh my God, it's the Justin Bieber song. I just do not know how it goes. Um, anyone, I, that's not how it goes. Oh my God. Um, if it's not you. If it's not you, it's not anyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're, I love it. I love this tag teaming. Yes. No, for real. <laughs> okay, the next word is truly. Truly. Um, oh my gosh, truly. This is always the one that stumps, a, stumps yeah. everyone. Calling oh. a friend. Actually, no. If it stumps everybody, give me a couple more seconds. Okay. <laughs> Truly, like, truly. I'm competitive. No, for real. <laughs> truly, truly, truly. Um, tr truly, 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 truly doing really bad at this. I'm phoning a friend. <laughs> Did you listen to One Direction? Yes. Okay, they have a song. It's, I, I don't, not a lot of people know about it. Um... Foolishly, completely fallen. Oh my gosh. I feel like all the directioners are going to be like, yep, she's canceled. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know that song. Oh, well, I will link, I will link you that song. I will link, link me that immediately. Song. I will link it to you. <laughs> as, an, as, as an excuse, it did only come to Spotify last year on their 10 year anniversary. That's true. Okay, well, Finally. that makes sense. Because I was like, I know every One Direction song. I'm just like, why am I not basically living right now? It's funny because some people knew some people knew about it. Some people did it until recently, and I'm like, I've learned I've known the song for it's a while. It's one of my favorite songs. Truly, wow, Manly now I have to listen. Is a bop. What? We will and link it to you. To we yes, will link it to you. Please. Don't you worry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The next word is flower. Oh my gosh, flower. I'm sure there's a Hannah Montana song in there somewhere. <laughs> it's somewhere. 
<laughs> Wait. <laughs> Is there flower power? I mean, right letter, I don't say I don't I wouldn't say Tana Montana, but the right letter of artist. It's Harry Styles, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is this a bad time to tell you that I don't listen to him? Oh my god, please don't cancel me. <laughs> I will not. I will not cancel you. Do you listen to Ed Sheeran? Not as much as I should. Not as much as you should. Do you okay. listen to Post Malone? Not as much as I should. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very much rock. Like, you wouldn't think, but I listen to a lot of rock music. <laughs> Yeah, and this girl said Hannah Montana first. I know, I know. Oh my god, oh my god. I literally just called on myself. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm not fine. That's okay. I will. I will be the friend. Um, Sunflower yes, yes. by Harry Styles. Oh my gosh, I know that song. It's too. really I actually. I think you might like it if you like like vibey songs. Like it's a very nice like vibey song, like yeah, summer summer vibes. Okay. Yes. Link that to me as well. I need I to get that in my. Got soul. you. I got okay. you. <laughs> okay, and the next word, which I personally am waiting for a real good performance now, is miles. Miles or smiles? Miles. 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 Um. Do 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 so we stop me while I'm ahead. You know what? We'll give that to you because of the do 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 do. That was that was the part I wanted. Honestly, oh, I didn't care about the lyrics. I wanted. <laughs> you wanted the do 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 do. You know what though? It's that song's not gonna get stuck in my head after this, and I'll just be I there like, well, I, I guess this is what we're doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome, Erica. So. We wanted to dive in a little bit about who you are and what you do and what you love to do. And the first thing that you said when you explained who and introduced yourself, you said you're an actress. So what inspired you to begin acting? Honestly, I have I I still want to know the answer to that question today. Like, I, I think. I'm convinced that I just tell people I woke up one day and I was like, I want to be an actress. Like, I'm sure there's more to it, but I can only remember being seven and seeing like a Disney Channel commercial. I was like, I want to do that. And I had no idea what that was. And I was just like, <laughs> okay, like, where do I start? How do I get into this? How do I get on that screen? Because I'm here and nobody's watching me. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I I don't know. I don't know what inspired me to, be, to start acting. Um, but I've always had like a very explosive, explosive personality like I love talking to people um I'll walk in a room not know anybody but I promise I'll be leaving the room knowing literally everyone because I can't stop talking sometimes um so I don't know I think it's just my my love for connecting with people and just being able to entertain and, and I like bringing the world into things that I like to do so anything that I'm learning that's why I like posting about when I'm starting a new hobby or like starting a new journey because I want people to experience like there's a start with everything like people don't just get there so I think just yeah. having that inspiration behind all my work really branched off into just the entertainment industry as a whole and then mm -hmm. boom actress boom actress and I yes. love that I think you know I think the the one thing that I love about you and how you interact with just about anyone is everyone's a friend right yes. like yes. it's no matter what situation no matter how many people are there you're always like we might not talk all the time but we're friends because yes. you care enough about me and i'll kind of send that back and i think it's a very admirable trait because not a lot of people kind of think of it especially because of how online our world has been oh my gosh yes. within the thank past you. year thank you no, yes i totally mean totally admirable love it <laughs> i just love connecting with people i mean i haven't talked to mel i don't think since freaking february and and then even before that it was the omegle thing but then i was like oh my gosh she's doing so good with her um drawings and like eh, i love it i love it i love it <laughs> Mel's, Mel's really good at her drawings. I'm, I'm proud of her. I, I watch it happen. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know how you have the patience for this, but we go love off. To see it. <laughs> um, so you've been spending some time recording self tapes and sending self tapes. What's kind of been like the one thing you've learned about yourself through the process of recording these self tapes and, and watching them back and being like, yeah, these are good or wait, let me redo that. I think. I think it's really interesting because we've been in this whole quarantine setup for, you know, basically a year now. 
And it's funny because it wasn't really a challenge for me because I was, I've been doing YouTube since YouTube came out. And so self tape set up lighting, having good backgrounds and all that stuff that came natural to me just because of what I did in my personal life. And so it wasn't too much of like a shift for me there, but I think what I noticed was how over the top I was too. Like I was able to see where my problems lied in some of my self tapes. Like sometimes I feel like I was definitely overacting and doing a little bit too much or like maybe not bringing too much energy to it. So I think it's just been interesting to see where my strengths and weaknesses lie because sometimes like we can be so excited about like starting a new journey or like doing something and thinking we're the best at it that we don't stop to realize like what can we improve on. And so being able to like stop and look at that for myself has been really, really helpful because I just continue to grow every day. So just looking mm -hmm. at, at where I can grow really. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's important to pinpoint that in yourself, right? To, to yeah. see something that you're doing and you're like, okay, this was good. Next time I could do this, you know, right, and right. continue to grow. Um, do you have any secrets as to how you get into like the role of the character that you're wanting to either audition for or to play? Ooh, um, it's weird. And I just noticed that I started doing this because I had to do this. Like, like I said, I just graduated from college and I was in a theater yeah. class um, as one of like my electives. I'm, I'm more in the TV and film aspect. So like theater mm -hmm. isn't really my thing, um, but I still appreciate the art behind. I appreciate every art behind everything. So when I was studying with my scene partner for like our final thing, I turn around, like I do a full 360 before I perform. And I don't know if that's like me in my head subconsciously, like getting into my character, or if that's just something that's fun to do before I start performing. Um, so that's kind of like a weird kind of thing that I do, but I guess secrets as far as just getting ready for a role or just getting ready for an audition in general is um, because we're in the world of self tapes, I'll set up all my stuff. Um, so like my lighting, my microphone, my camera, and I will walk away for 20 minutes and watch an episode of literally anything because I think sometimes we can get so in our heads. Um, and even as a content creator, I think sometimes we can get so in our heads about just wanting to get it out the way. But if I like set everything up and just come back to it and just be ready to give all I've got, I can really just hone in on what I'm trying to do instead of everything being like one, two, three, four, five. And it's just one, two, three. Yeah pause four five because I'm I'm very much a quick person like even as I speak I'm, I'm a fast talker and so I've just been working on slowing down because this world is already fast enough and so I just want to take time mm -hmm. to enjoy what I'm doing and like loving the process so mm -hmm. just setting up my stuff taking a break and then coming back and rocking it out yeah I love that what kind of inspired you to do that you know break in the middle was it was it someone who told you hey you need to take a breath before you do something? Or was it something that you noticed yourself start to do just because your mind needed the, the break? Honestly, so the new Clubhouse app, I have mm -hmm. been on that profusely. Like, I stay on there. It's like I'm always on the phone with someone. I'm like, okay, I need to take a nap. But I think someone on Clubhouse told me that they did that as one of their practices. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And honestly, I think it was one of my coaches because a lot of my coaches are starting to get on Clubhouse and, you know, gain a bigger mm -hmm. audience and stuff like that. Um, and they were like, yeah, I set up all my stuff and then I just go eat. I go for a walk. I come back. I take a shower. They do something that breaks them up from setup to character. So it helps them get into that mindset of the character because it's it's very rare that an actor can just flip it on just like that. Like if I'm talking to you now and then all of a sudden I'm a serial killer. Now, look, I'm not. But it was just the first thing that came into my mind that's far from me. Um, yeah. But, oh, my gosh, shows up on, like, where are they now? Five years later, like, oh, my God, didn't she, like, claim that? No, 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 I kid, I kid. But um, I, I think it was someone on Clubhouse, so I have to give props to whoever that was. But it's been yeah. great ever since. Like, I've seen a dramatic difference, especially in, like, my callbacks. Like, it's in the it's in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding? Isn't that the phrase mm -hmm, or something? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of where I've been at on that. It wasn't really my idea, but it works for me. Okay. It's interesting because I'm a photographer. Like, that's aside from being a graphic designer, I'm like, I am a photographer. I say full time, mm -hmm. but like half time because I have a full time job. Mm -hmm. um, but I was doing something with a, with a friend of mine who was mentoring me, and she was like, You need to slow down. You know, you're, you're too fast. You, you're moving too fast. You need to slow down. So seeing it not just be in photography, but in like 
every other aspect of the entertainment industry is, is very eye-opening because it's like yeah. we all tend to be very fast-paced people living oh gosh, in an yes. already fast-paced world so and it's like what's that. the prize like what's at the finish line like more work yeah. you know so once you kind of yeah. get in that space of like it, it's the rat race that's what i learned in my in one of my um communication class i had this professor his name was dr Schaus, and he has been so pivotal in like how i view the world um and i talk about it every time they're like oh is there a professor that's inspired you i'm like yes dr Schaus has inspired me so hard because if it wasn't for his class i would have never learned about the rat race and i would have never known that i was like doing it like okay i need to i need to get this done so i can start working on this but then it's like for like what's the prize you know instead of just yeah. enjoying it yeah that's right that's right enjoy the ride and right. the destination will eventually get there exactly no, love that i love that um and you know i think it's kind of cool because you know you still do you still do uh, youtube full time um like you are you know you did like a whole binge of the vampire diaries i remember seeing <laughs> that and you did like yes. a binge of a couple of other shows and stuff that have come out do you think you know it's stuff that you've applied throughout every aspect of your life or has it just been you know that pause that like taking a break is that something that's just in terms of self tapes or is it have you noticed it migrate to every aspect of all the content that you create pretty much that is a great question like truly that's a great question because i think about that a lot too um i think at one point it applied to everything so from youtube to tiktok to self tapes mm -hmm. to anything else i was doing in my life I, it was so weird. I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, like, but between like December of 2020 and January of 2021, I just felt like I was so burned out. Like I had experienced my first ever burnout ever in my life. And I just was like, dang, I really need to take a break. And so um, I actually just started picking back up acting. Like I was active in pilot season, which um, for people who aren't aware of in the acting industry, pilot season usually runs from January to about now, January to about mm -hmm. May. Um, where there's new shows and you're, you're auditioning for a lot of new shows that are coming on. And I was just like, I need to just finish college. I need to just focus on one thing yeah. and call it a day so that I can really put 130% into this when I can. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it, it really worked out for the best. Like I graduated, I did my thing and now I feel a yeah. lot more on track of where I wanted to be. Um, and I yeah. stopped looking at things as a race, like for my, cause it's always been me versus me. Like the great yeah. thing about the, the one thing I think I love the most about myself is being able to um, not really worry about what people have to say because everyone's always going to have an opinion like the world has their opinions and people are going to talk about you but it's it's what you do with that and if you do nothing with it it can't affect you so mm -hmm. you know just That's true. applying that to my everyday life has really helped me like calm down and be able to relax I've done a lot of relaxation techniques and I think that's what's helped the most from everything mm -hmm. that I do on the daily <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I th and I think people need to hear that, right? Like, I think we we have such a very fast life yes. um, between social media and between trying to keep up with all the trends and trying to keep up with life and mm -hmm. our mental health and what's happening with COVID and blah, blah, blah. Like, there's yeah. so much that goes beyond just, like, the bubble that you live in. So taking that chance to breathe and, like, refocus yourself and recenter yourself, I think, is very very important um you yeah. talked about you know you've done tv you've done some film you're doing self-tapes for pilot season and you did theater for for school you did a theater class in school you know between all the different things that you've touched and put your feet dipped your feet into what's like the one thing that stuck out to you that you're like this is the stream that i want to go into that's a great question um I think when I, so I started training with a talent agency that won't be named here, um, was not the best talent agency, very much a scam, very much scam vibes. And, um, I was really, I, I didn't know about it until I was like basically three, four, seven program, but I had went into that and I was like, I really love everything that I'm learning. Like there's always something new to learn in this industry. Like you will never know anything like to the, even on your deathbed, there's going to be so much more still to learn. Um, and I think that's like the beauty about it. Like you can never be super proficient in this. Like you can be a great actor mm -hmm. or actress, but you're always going to grow in like five, 10 years from now, I'll be a completely different actor than what I'm going out for now. And I think that's so beautiful in not knowing. 
Um, because I'm a person that always wants to know, like, okay, what's next? What's All right, next? let's go. <laughs> and 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 this <laughs> this career humbles me a lot because you just things change so frequently, and a lot of things are always on go. So you always have to be on top of your feet. Um, so I, I I don't know exactly where the p- turning point for me was. I just knew this is exactly where I wanted to be. And there was nothing that I, oh, that's a lie, actually. I was, it was 2013, and I was actually researching Wendy Wright, who I mentor with now, which is crazy, because I was, like, starstruck over her. When I was 13, I mean, I, there weren't many I people I was that. starstruck over. And I was like, oh, my gosh, she knows so much. I could learn so much under her. And six, seven years later, I'm, you know, working with her and stuff like that. So it's just, it's yeah. it's amazing. But, um... I think just once I started realizing I was doing the work on my own, like nobody was telling me, hey, Erica, like go ahead and get this done. I literally just lost sleep over just learning about the business. I knew that there was nothing else I was going to want to be in if I was doing that at such a young age. And I had the same feelings about it now than that I did then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could definitely tell you're so passionate about it because you're very, you're very like, I got this. Like, I love what I'm doing. And I love to hear that because... It's a very, it's a very brutal like industry, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how mm-hmm. brutal and like, competitive it is. But before we get into that, we have a lot of listeners and a lot of people who actually have an interest in this field of work and acting, and some into producing and writing and stuff. But what's kind of one tip or advice you'd give someone who wants to get into the entertainment industry? I'm trying to think about the tip that tops all tips, you know, because there's so <laughs> many. There's yeah. so many, um, <laughs> but the one, if you're just starting out brand new, like you looked at something and you were like, I want to be an actor yesterday, mm-hmm. um, train, get yeah. coached. Like Leonardo DiCaprio still gets coached. She just has a specific private coach. And mm-hmm. you know, again, you never stop learning in this business. This business is cutthroat. And even I look at myself as just like this big yellow blub like I'm just a big yellow blub because I'm just always happy and I love life um but in an industry that's a very like shriveled up and cold gray ugh. Yeah. it's like you know you have to do your best to shine your light through there and and understand that not everything is going to be for you there's going to be a lot mm-hmm. of no's a lot of mm-hmm. no's and you have to be so okay with that and know that like your time is coming and I think that's the best pa- place yeah. I can kind of Put it out for anybody that's interested, anybody that's in it, and anyone that's well and over-experienced as me, but kind of like in a rut as well. Um, just stick with it. You know, it's a long mm-hmm. game. You're playing a long game with this career. So if this is something you really want, I would just say train your butt off. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I always say like in any media or in, in any life, job, work, life in general, like you need to invest in yourself otherwise oh God, you won't yes. actually go anywhere because you don't know what you think you know right like even me yes. like I work as a graphic designer and I'm still googling things left and right like how do I do this on InDesign or how do I do that and I studied it so I'm like you're never a hundred percent educated and... in every aspect so invest yes. in yourself allow yourself to grow in, in that kind of lifespan and, and and space as well right yes continue to learn and invest in yourself because this is yeah. a hefty hefty <laughs> business yep <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into some like real talks is is what our spill the tea is how we like to call it because we do like to spill some tea on here Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to kind of bring up a couple of platforms and things that you've done um, and you've posted about on your Instagram um, that intrigued me and I was like I just want to know more about this uh, so the first one is TikTok and you know if anyone knows you they know you <laughs> from the one iconic Julian the Phantoms TikTok where you're running into headquarters like give me season two yes <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus oh hold on oh yeah no <laughs> I did not want the, the the listeners to hear that hack but uh, <laughs> I was like eh, eh, eh. Um, you're good. You're back good. to your question. <laughs> yeah. So why did you kind of dive into TikTok and, and start to use it as a platform that you put yourself out on? TikTok started as a joke. 
I had no idea what this app was. This was like 2018 for me, which I think is when it came out. Or maybe it came out a year mm. before because I think I was late to the train, the TikTok train. Um, I started as a joke. I was like, oh, this is boring. <laughs> this is really boring. And then I started seeing people post like funny skits. And I was like, oh, wait. Oh, wait. This is for me. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I just I had started posting like little funny videos. There were It was back when... Um, I was on the TikTok trend when it was like, uh, I'm trying to remember what the main song was. It was like when Katy Perry's Firework was, was like okay. the main trend. It was, so it was way, way back then when it first started. And I was like, okay, this is fun. But I, I'd post a video and I'd leave and come back like five months later. And then I, st I, I studied abroad. And I went to Europe and I studied abroad in Europe for about six months. And it was so fun. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'll start a travel vlog. But I didn't have time to edit all these YouTube videos. And so that's when TikTok came to, to the picture. And I was like, okay, yeah. I'll just make quick little 60 second videos with my <laughs> friends. And it was the last night in Italy before we came back to America. And my TikTok blew up from like my travel thing. And I was like, oh my God, I'm famous. <laughs> But really, I was I was not. I humbled myself because the next day I posted a video and it got like five views. But I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, it as, was fun. as it always does. Doesn't it always do that? You get like yes. one viral video and then it's like trickle. It's all downhill from here. I'm like, wow. So my 15 minutes of fame was five seconds. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how the TikTok journey started for me. And then I kind of ventured into um, different things that I was doing. So I wanted to do like a vlog style and I was like, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of like doing vlog styles on my YouTube. So I kind of steered away from that. And then I got yeah. into Julian the Phantom's TikTok. And I was like, okay, I like it here. This is fun. <laughs> this is where I want to be. The, fan the Phantoms are amazing. And so I just started making a bunch of videos, really just trying to promote them for a season two. Because I think it was at the time when it had first dropped. It was like two weeks in. And they were okay. like, oh, push us, push us for a season two. I was like, oh. We're in there like swimwear. I got y'all. Let's go. And so I just started making all these videos of like prediction videos. And then I, I trickled that on over to my YouTube and it kind of became a series. And I didn't intend for it to go as long as it did. But people were like, give us more. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. That's fine. And so I just, I had been making Julian the Phantom videos since then. And I still do every now and then. Yeah. But um, High School Musical, the musical, the series, comes out this Friday. So we will be yeah. venturing into a new leg um, <laughs> of <laughs> reactions <laughs> and predictions. Yeah. So um, that's kind of how it started for me. And, and um, oh, I brought my workout journey there, too, to your point yeah. about um, the Avengers workout earlier. I don't really know where that came from. There's just This has been the year for Marvel TV series. And if yes. anyone knows me, that's alive knows that I love everything in me, Marvel. And so I was yeah. like, you know what? Let's train like them. It can't be that hard. I died the first day. I'm, I'm convinced <laughs> that I'm living an out-of-body experience right now. Um, but it's fine. I'm fine. Um, You're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> but it's been great since then. Like, I just, I've just been working. I use it as an excuse to just get myself up to go to the gym. There's really mm -hmm. nothing special I do. Like, I don't get a workout from anywhere. Um, I just do what I can do <laughs> for that day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, speaking of the Avengers workout, I, I Googled it because I was very intrigued. I'm like, what do the Avengers do? And it was like, there's the diet side of it, and then there's yeah. the workout side of it, and it's like a six-week program for an hour. I was like, or yeah. I could do my 20-minute hit workout from YouTube <laughs> instead. <laughs> yes, yeah. I tried, um, I tried Chris Hemsworth uh, Center app for a while. And then okay. it wanted a subscription. And, you know, being a college student, I was like, mm, I don't know about that. And so <laughs> I did like... Love free you, Chris, but like <laughs> right. free trials. Right. Free trials is all I'm here for right now. <laughs> but um, it, it it was cool. Like, I love the free trial. It's got a lot of stuff on there. And I lost a lot okay. of weight, like, using it okay. for the time that I did. Because um, okay. I incorporated a lot of HIIT workouts, too. So I think mm -hmm. that's what helped, too, with all the additional stuff that I was doing. Yeah. And, you know, TikTok and, and Instagram and YouTube, they're all becoming such like major, major brands and, and platforms for any content creator. You know, like if, if you're on those three, mm -hmm. you 
can blow up and you can get your your videos and your stuff across do you think like that it, it, it's something that's come because of the world that we live in that it's become very you know we we rely on zoom and we rely on instagram and snapchat and tiktok to talk to people or do you think it's something that was naturally just going to happen because of the way our world works i think a little bit of both in a way like we're our our generation is very much the era of technology like if we didn't grow up with technology like we grew up i feel like everyone who's in our generation and the generation after us has grown up with some kind of technology so it was just the way that the world was headed into um yeah. especially with seeing how time efficient things um are with technology from like anything medical to anything um creative it just makes things a lot yeah. faster which can be a great thing but sometimes can be very detrimental because maybe you lose out on like the enjoyment part of that um mm -hmm. of anything but i think it is i think it's a really good i think it's a really good thing for us i think a lot of people are starting to realize they can do what they want to do and incorporate that to the world and showcase that to the world in a creative way yeah. and make a life for themselves without having to go to college now i'm not saying you know don't go to college because i just graduated mm -hmm. <laughs> but i am saying that there are so many ways to make it and i think having technology, having social media creates those opportunities. Um, you know, some of the, most of the opportunities that I have now would not have happened without social media. Us talking mm -hmm. right now would not have happened without social media. So, you know, as much as people hate social media or aren't the biggest fans of it, I think there's a lot of opportunity in that. And I think if you can keep your happiness and do things that you love to do, I think everybody wins. But, mm -hmm. you know, the world we live in, there's always going to be that traditional kind of work. And um, some people just want to naturally gravitate towards that. We're always going to need doctors. We're always going to need lawyers. Mm -hmm. We're always going to need all those things that our parents grew up doing. Um, but I think it's, I think it's a great thing. I side on, I, um, I side on creating your own opportunities. So I love it. Yes. Love that. I love that. Um, and, you know, we've kind of mentioned this before, like the entertainment industry is very, very brutal. It's, it's very hectic as well. Um, how do you deal with the struggle of like comparing yourself to other actresses or other content creators or anything else that you see that you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I wish I could do that type of thing? Um, it's, it's always interesting because I always get this question. It's always worded differently. <laughs> um, when I do hear something like that, but it's it's weird. It's weird because it may be, I don't even know how, how to describe it, <laughs> but I am so comfortable with where I'm at because I know that mm -hmm. I'm not going to be in the space that I'm going to be in for the rest of my life. And I think that's yeah. just a great thing about, I guess, maybe the environment I grew up in or just the people that have been in my life and have been raising me and taught me, um, especially my parents and just being okay with where you're at and mm -hmm. um i i don't i don't really look at what other people have i'm always on the support train i'm always very happy when people like get that job that they want got that sponsorship that internship they were looking for but i'm never like if me and someone else were doing the exact same thing say me and a, a really good friend say for example me and anthony are out for the same show and he mm -hmm. gets it and i don't I'm never going to be like, ugh, whatever. I'm definitely going to be like, <laughs> you go, because we both worked our butts off, but they yeah. saw that in you for that, and I know my time is coming. So I always, mm -hmm. I'm very close with my faith. Um, I'm, very, I'm a very spiritual person, and I do a lot of, like, yoga. I, I pray a lot. And um, I think I've just been so comfortable in, in that space in my life that I don't really focus on what, you know what god has what the universe what whatever the listeners mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. um find comfort in uh I, I just don't look at other people's things for myself yeah. if that makes sense i'm trying to just yeah. kind of make it in a a regular degular kind of thing but i just mm. life life is going to happen for us how it's supposed to so yeah. at the end of the day just have fun 100 percent. and it's funny because i was going to ask you like how do you stay grounded in your identity and you kind of mentioned that you know you're very you're very grounded in your faith and that's what kind of keeps you going. And I think that's yeah. that, like, that's a huge thing because identity is a huge aspect of who we all are. Um, right. You know, I'm still learning. I'm still like, I'm still growing. There are going to be times where it's like, I feel like 
for example, I had a really big opportunity that, that had just happened not even a week ago, and I really, really, really wanted it. I don't even know if it's mine yet. My brain just instantly, for that moment, I think because I'd been working so hard for it, my brain was just like, oh, you didn't get it. That doesn't sound good. You don't know. And so whether I get it or don't get it, I am okay because I know I'm consistently putting myself to the next step and still enjoying yeah. my life, you know? Um, yeah. So I just I just take it as it comes. I can't change anything that life already has written in stone for me, so I might as well have fun while doing it. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. And I think having fun is really important because once you suck out the fun in anything that you do, you're going to start to resent it and you're not going to exactly. actually want to put time into it. And especially with acting where there's a lot of memorization and scheduling oh and time and effort is like you have to love it otherwise you will resent yourself for even going into the field right yes um so in terms of just like advice you'd give to someone who's wanting to get over that idea of comparison and get over you know the demotivation that comes with covid and that comes with well i didn't hear back so guess i won't get it or you know what I didn't hear back so I'm not good enough so might as well quit like how do you keep going how do you push yourself to like okay it was a no but like the yes will eventually come first of all I love that you asked me that because I don't think it's asked enough uh you know no matter what field that you're in so that's a great question yeah. um personally for me and for anybody that's like unmotivated or not seeing as much work as they want to see whatever field they're in I live in that moment like there are times that I'm down I'm not even gonna front and say like oh I just get back up and I do it again mm -hmm. no I'm sometimes <laughs> there are times where I'm really like down about the fact that I really feel like I could be doing a lot better for myself when I'm doing the best that I can um, already yeah. so I'm really psyching myself out oh, trying to overwork myself when I'm doing exactly what I can do at that moment that I'm at in my life and so I just, I stick in it. If I just want to sit on the couch for three days and not do anything or not do as much as I maybe would have wanted to if I was feeling motivated, mm -hmm. um, I just acknowledge it. And I'm okay in that because for me, that can translate back into my work. If I have to play a character that's really lazy or, un or unmotivated, I, I, I guess I want to say that I channel that into my future roles because I think mm -hmm. just so... I think on such a high level of this is already going to happen for me. It's already written in stone. I'm really just walking towards my destiny at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just I take it all in because I want to use that energy and that emotion later on when needed so that I can portray yeah. it as authentically as possible for my characters. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just deal with it and by and by dealing with it. I do nothing. <laughs> so I'm probably not the best person to answer that one. But I would say to just be OK with it. Like, don't put yeah. yourself further into a slump and it's easier said than done because people have different like life situations they've, they've grown up differently um it's mm -hmm. a lot of like me versus me or me versus the world for people it's always yeah. one or the other but when you figure out the, a couple things or that one thing that gets you back into who you are you can just do a bunch of that and just call it a day you know don't even mm -hmm. don't even think about life as this big chess game just sometimes it is checkers you know you just really have to be who you are you know and, and be yeah. where you are in that moment so yeah. don't make life so complicated because as far as we know this is all, all we get and so i just would hate to waste it on like mm -hmm. oh i could have been happy for that week but you know what if we didn't have downs we wouldn't be able to appreciate the ups yeah no i love that and i think one of the major things that you said that i mean resonate with me because i'm that type of person it's if you don't want to do it, take that break that you need. Because mm -hmm. it might be, you know, your mind telling you, I can't think anymore. I need to be away from this, right? And right. it goes back to, you know, you saying you're taking that 20-minute break between mm -hmm. setting up and recording because it allows you to have that break. And I think mental health isn't talked about enough. And it isn't. your mental health matters more than anything else that you do. And if you need mm -hmm. that break for your mental health, take it. And the people yeah. who are around you will support you in taking that break. Because um, yeah. otherwise, I'm, you'll burn out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad that we're a generation that speaks up for mental health and that we have an issue with people that don't think that that's a problem and think, you mm -hmm. know, it's, and I can't speak for, I can't speak just for my community. I can't speak for my age yeah. group, you know, whatever. Um, but I know specifically for me, I'm, I'm very blessed to have a family that, 
does listen and stuff like that. But I know some other other families may not associate you know mental illnesses with that. It may just be like you know mm-hmm. get out of that slump. This is just right now, and and not being able to talk about it enough, where people feel like they have someone who they feel open enough to converse with, it can be very detrimental yeah. to them and, and really take them down yeah. a path that they didn't want to see for themselves. So just being that opening ear, even if you don't know what to say um, or you don't know what to do or how to direct them, sometimes just letting, just sometimes just sitting in silence with someone is enough. And so if yeah. no one takes anything from this <laughs> podcast, listening or watching, please be there for your friends that, that you don't know what to do with and just do nothing with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people just need to vent, right? Right. They just want to, like, I just need to verbally vent what's in my mind. Don't Mm -hmm. give me advice. And Anthony actually tweeted something. He was like, I ask my my people, do you want me to listen or do you want advice? Because then it changes Mm -hmm. how you respond in that situation. And I think that has been something that I'm like, do you want me to just listen to you verbally tell me what's going on? Or do you want me to help you figure something out? And it helps because sometimes it's, hey, you know what, I just need to just say it. I just need to say it out loud to come to terms right. with it. And other times it's like, I don't know what to do, please. Exactly. Help. And it's, Thank you. I think it, it's, it's such a, it's such a um, proactive way of listening to and being able to mm-hmm. just be like, I'm here for you if you just really want to get this off your chest. But, you know, yeah. I, can, I can advise you the best way I know how, um, but I don't have yeah. to. And I think that's beautiful. Yeah, I know. Anthony's very, Anthony's very good with that. He's Absolutely. A- He's got, he's, he's, he's very good in that sense of things. <laughs> um, so the last question I want to ask you before we do some fun questions okay. is being a female in the media industry. And I think, you know, we have a bunch of different things that we can dive into. Um, but specifically, you know, a female person of color who's trying to dive into a world that's very heavily male dominated. Um, how has your kind of experience been in trying to like just go through the, that hurdle of stepping in and making a name for yourself and pushing through the boundaries that society has put and trying to reshape at the same time right um you're 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 popping on these questions these are very good <laughs> questions um it's interesting because not only in the acting or entertainment field i mean that's just in any field that mm-hmm. women of color people of color in general have to fight for every day. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not vocal about this. I just try to be that, that game changer versus that person who is talking about, it's, it's important to talk about yeah. the history and it's important to know exactly kind of where we're coming from, but it's also important to focus on where we're headed. And I think yeah. I'm always just focused on like, where are we headed? What's, mm-hmm. what's next? What can I do? Um, that's going to inspire mm-hmm. people that look like me, sound like me, operate like me. Yeah. Um, but also for people that don't, you know, women that really just want to come up and, and are inspired by the, the work that I do and um, mm-hmm. the things that I'll do for my community once I get the opportunity to. So to your question, I just focus on what can I do that's going to stay true to who Erica is, um, stay true to Erica's yeah. morals yeah. and and still mm-hmm. tell a story, you know, whether that mm-hmm. story is comedic, whether that story is dramatic, inspirational, um, whatever the case may be, I always want to be true to myself in that sense. So I think just being able to, um, give me two seconds. No worries. Back to my point. <laughs> that was a, uh, that was a uh, Mama A. <laughs> Mama A. She's, she's all good. Door. Mama A. Love her. Love her. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> but to that point, to your question, um, yeah. yeah, just focusing on where we can go next versus just continuously. Like, what's interesting? What's interesting? Um, uh, Marsa Marsa Martin, the youngest producer in the industry, woman of color. Um, mm-hmm. She did this article or this interview, I think about a week ago and she was asked a question very similar to what you just asked me I believe and she said that she didn't really want to focus on projects that dealt with pain and in and, in and, and black pain because we have a lot of those stories and wonderful directors and actors and producers and um, everyone that can portray those stories but she wanted to focus on things that 
really brought us up in a comedic light. Like, mm -hmm. just like everyone mm -hmm. else would expect to see one project, the same thing, just with people of color. And I think I'm yeah. more geared in that, that lane as well, just because I just have such a bubbly personality and I really like to mm -hmm. make people feel good. And while I would love to tell my history and probably one day will with projects, um, mm -hmm. I think being able to have things that people can gravitate towards that make them feel good is just the yeah. most important thing because I don't think we have enough of that. We have so much in this world that brings yeah. us down. So if we yeah. can allow us to have more projects that bring us up and just make it a, a normal thing across across the way, yeah. it, just, it, it would make life mm -hmm. a lot lighter. I think. One hundred percent. And on that note, we're gonna go to the fun question. Woohoo! I'm excited, I'm excited. <laughs> okay. Um the first question I have for you is what is one artist you can listen to on repeat and never get tired of? One artist I can never get tired of. Oh my goodness. Right on the spot. <laughs> of course I would blank. Of course I would blank. Um It's so interesting. I'm really into underground artists, people that no one knows, like, at all. Okay. I mean, like, people that are our age um, and just kind of trying to break into the music scene because um, I really like supporting a lot of my friends and a, and a lot of people that I don't know. So I would yeah. have to say there's this artist named Bravo. Um, he's really good. I found him on TikTok, actually, and he has this one song called Skyfall. It is the song I go to when I'm upset, happy, sad. It, it it combats all moods and it just puts me back in like a neutral state and so bravo is my go-to artist okay we'll check him out please um okay next question kind of going off of that one is what are like your top two favorite songs of all time of all time from that artist or just of all time just general of all time um oh my gosh <laughs> Um, the party's just begun by the Cheetah Girls will always give me hype. That will always give me as hype. As it should, as it should. <laughs> and then, um, uh, Still Dreaming by J. Cole is always going to be like my second kind of, J. Cole's kind of up there and like my top artist. I mean, he's from my hometown. That's the homie. Um, but yeah, that, that song, it just gets me in a nice vibe mood. So whenever I'm like working or just driving or just just relaxing. I, I put on Still Dreaming by J. Cole. Okay. I feel like during this interview, we've learned a lot about your personality. But I personally think this next question also says a lot about your personality. Is If you had to pick a song that plays every single time you enter a room, what song would it be and why? <laughs> what song would it be and why? Can I look at my music? Of course. Okay. I was like, oh my gosh, why am I blinking? Um, let's see. She's like, music? I don't know her. <laughs> no, for real. Um, <laughs> let's see. I feel like no one's going to know any of the music I listen to because it's not the typical stuff that you're going to see or listen to. <sighs> let's see. Ooh, I think... Ready or Not by Bridget Mindler. Yeah, that's that's like, Bridget is so slept on. She's such a good artist. She's so slept on. She's that's amazing. I, I love her. Like, love yes. her. Yes, because yeah. she, she's like, you know, Ready or Not, here I come. And that's on period, because here I come. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next question is, what is the craziest food combination that you've ever tried? Ooh, craziest food combination I've ever tried. I'm a very picky eater. When I say very, I mean like I eat five things consistently um, and a bunch Me of fruit. <laughs> um, ooh, I consistently dip french fries in ice cream, but I feel like everybody does that. As you should. That's like the only way to eat fries, let's be honest. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I, think, I think that would have to be... The weirdest thing when oh my gosh I'm about to tell myself but it's fine when I was nine I swear I was the next Rachel Ray I was the next chef they were gonna put me on Food Network and I love strawberry smoothies with everything in me and so I was like oh my gosh I'm, I'm just feeling very chefy 
And so I just made a strawberry smoothie and I just dipped everything that day I had on my plate in a strawberry smoothie. I dipped a piece of broccoli. This is where my career ends. It, it ends before it even starts. I dipped a piece of broccoli into a strawberry smoothie and I said, disgusting, but you know what? It's good. It's good because I felt very chefy, and I think that's probably the weirdest food combination I've had. Broccoli and strawberry smoothie. I, I think that wins. Yeah, definitely. Def I want to see someone top that for sure. Mel's like, why are we even still on this call? <laughs> anyway, um, you, you mentioned before that you've been to Europe. Um, but generally, what would you say is the favorite, your favorite place that you've traveled to? London. So far. I don't even have to think about it. London, the United Kingdom is so fun. Like, and I think maybe it's just because I don't have to learn another language. <laughs> it was so hard. It was so hard. It was so, so hard. When I got to Italy, I was like, oh my gosh, hi. They were like, buongiorno. I was like, hi. And they were like, um, and I guess, you know, at the time I hadn't learned uh, Italian yet. I hadn't even started my classes and stuff like that. So I figured out Brangiorno just meant good morning. And they would say it no matter if it was before 5 p.m. It was always Brangiorno. Brangiorno. I was like, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But hi. Um, <laughs> wow, I'm, I have to cough. That's okay. <laughs> that It was like there for about a good hour. I was like, just <laughs> wait till we're done. <laughs> but, um, London is definitely my favorite place to be just because there's so much to do. I, I love riding the tube, which is what they call like a train over there. I guess I didn't know that. Before. So I just felt so cool. I was like, I'm on the tube, mom. <laughs> and she was like, <laughs> call me back. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, so I was like, I don't care. No, Mama, I don't care about the tube. Literally. <laughs> and so I think London was just really fun because, um, it was, it was very spontaneous. Like we had no plans. We went there for our spring break and um, um, uh, me and my friend, we went there for our spring break. And then when we got off, we didn't know what we were gonna do. We checked into this hostel and we just like started walking all around. And then my friend Richie, he lives in London. He does a lot of photography for a lot of celebrities that, that perform out there. And so he got us into this concert and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is so fun. So we, um, stayed at the O2, which is like a concert venue in London. And um, and um, we just had a great time there. And then after, I think we crashed. It was like 3 a.m. when we got back, we crashed. But it just, we didn't have any plans. And I think that's why London stuck out to me the most. Because um, everywhere else I went from like France to Switzerland to Germany, I went to Germany. I was there for like a hot second. Um, and I wish I could have spent more time there because there's so much I wanted to see and do. Um, but it was fun overall. London is probably gonna be like my top. I'm planning to go back very soon. Well, when you go, take me with you. I'll be your personal photographer. Yes, love that. <laughs> also, hit you up. Germany. Yep, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but where in, where in Germany did you go? I'm gonna butcher this. It's the one everyone knows. It's the one with the M. I don't wanna butcher it. Mun M? Munich? You, Munich? you mean a mu Munich? Munich. Okay, I was like, I think it's Munich. That's, that's the English way of saying it. Okay. You want to hear the German word? The German way? München. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> just disown me right now. It's fine. <laughs> no, but it, it's it's funny that you you've been to Bavaria because in in Germany it's kind of like an inside joke that Bavaria isn't part of Germany because they have a completely different culture. They're the ones with the lederhosen. Nowhere else in Germany we do that. Oh. It's, it's just them. So they, we're like out of the mix. I was out of the mix when I went there. Got it. <laughs> no, I'm I'm up north. I'm like all the way. So, the top, where, so where was I when I was in Germany? You were at the bottom. Oh, okay. Okay. You yeah. Were, you were literally. We only, like, yeah. We're just going to cross the border. Just going to cross so just that we say we're in Germany, but we're not actually in Germany. Right, right. <laughs> Like, hey, touchdown. Okay, bye. <laughs> that, that was my life. But, you know, it was fun. It was fun. Okay. Uh, the next question is, if you could switch bodies with someone for an entire day, who would you switch with? Oh, my gosh. Zendaya. Zendaya, hands down. Like, me and Zendaya are very close in height. That's a lie. Um, 
kind of. I mean, I don't really know how tall Zendaya is. I think she's like she's like six foot, maybe. I'm like five eight, so kind of. Yeah, totally. But <laughs> you're like, yeah, totally. Just say yes, and maybe she'll shut up. <laughs> but Zendaya for sure, because I mean. She is somebody that I feel like I would really want to be best friends with, you know, once I kind of really navigate my way through this industry. Um, Because she's all, I I feel like just from her work, because we're very close in age, if not the same age. um, And she has been very unproblematic. She's very, she's been very to herself and loves giving back to her community. And that are, those are just a lot of things that I very much value. So I think being able to see how that, would pan out already obviously being in somebody else's body it would just be nice knowing where i'm headed if that makes sense if i only had a day and Mm -hmm. i had to switch back fair okay fair yeah zendaya i i 100 get it yes that woman yes okay we already mentioned that we kind of all got together because of julie and the phantoms Mm -hmm. on that note if you were to become a phantom right now what would your unfinished business be? Oh my gosh, that is such a good question. What would my unfinished business be? I feel like- I always love this question. I, yeah, <laughs> wow, wow. You can't even prepare for a question like that. Um, I feel like mine would be something music related. I feel like, I'd be like, I just had to play that last song. Someone just let me play that last song for my dog. Like, something real odd. <laughs> something where it's like, yeah, we're going to kill her off the show again. Can someone get, can someone, get someone? Thank Bonnie you. Bennett who? Bonnie Bennett no, who? For real. <laughs> so what did she say? Like, uh, I don't know. She said, I don't know. I'm not going to embarrass myself. <laughs> I was so confident, too. I was like, Fesmatos. Oh, my gosh. That's what it is. Fesmatos. Something like that. Incendia. Yeah. Incendia. I watch. I watch the Vampire Diaries like three times a year because. Oh I just my love gosh. That show so much. I have to. I wanted to give myself enough time away from it so I could re-experience it because I binge all eight se- like all eight seasons in two months on Christmas break this past year, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna go back to it in about a month. Well, have you seen the originals? I haven't. I need to finish that first. Yes, you have to finish. To I'm just going to say, if you're someone like me who cries very easily with, like, shows, the last three episodes of that show... Well, destroy you. I was crying for three hours straight. Oh my gosh. No, you get so emotionally attached to these characters and, like, their hopes and their dreams, and you really get sucked into the show. No pun mm-hmm. intended. But, like, I mean... Yeah, now I'm gonna watch the originals after this. You have you have to watch the originals. <laughs> okay, another question that personally we we got it on Twitter, um, but I just love knowing what it would be for you. Um, what celebrity would you let punch you in the face and why? Dylan O'Brien could punch me in the face and drag me across the floor because. Amen. <laughs> Because that man. That man is so fine. No. And for what? For no reason. For, like, literally. I want to punch him for being that. You know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I don't want him to find this years later and be like, so, what's up? What's up? You want to fight? You want to tussle? <laughs> um, no, I just, I think he's an insanely talented actor. Um, in all his, in all his franchises, I mean, he's, he has such range. I think he's one of, like, the most slept on like supporting characters because growing up I saw him in a lot of supporting things from like Styles and Teen Wolf to um, uh, the internship that that one movie mm-hmm. that he was in I can't remember who he was co-starring with um, but he's a very Owen Wilson very, yes yes he's a very talented actor and I think he portrays like emotions very well um, and you really get sucked into his character so I think him <laughs> well, I would definitely let him punch me across the face drag me across the floor and throw me off the balcony Yes. Yep. <laughs> Retweet. <laughs> Retweet. Okay. Another question. If you didn't have the career you have right now, what would you be up to? It's always going to be something creative. I've always done a piece of everything from graphic design. I do photography now. Videography is my main um, source of income right now in video editing. Um, 
So something creative, if I, if I wasn't doing act, if I wasn't in front of the camera, I'd be behind the camera, whether I'm mm-hmm. helping direct, I'm a PA, I'm a video editor, which I currently am now. So in a way, I'm living the best of both worlds at Hannah Montana, coming for your career. Um, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so something in the field of, of film. Okay, um, we have two last questions. One of them is, which fictional character would you think be most exciting to meet in real life? Ooh, ooh, what a fictional character. Ooh, it has to be someone from the Vampire Diaries. Bonnie Bennett, Bonnie Bennett. I'm sorry, hands down, no, Klaus, no, Caroline. The whole cast, the whole cast, <laughs> the whole cast. You just walk into Mystic Falls, it's fine. <laughs> Literally, let's just take a road trip to Mystic Falls. and ev- Everyone except for Matt, because Matt kept pissing me off. I was like, look, brother, Elena is not in love with you. You should have died. It's fine. I'm fine. Maddie, 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 Maddie. Maddie, Maddie. Ugh. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> speaking of Matt, speaking of Matt, what would you say is the most useless talent you have? <laughs> no, honestly. <laughs> I'm like, all you do is die. Ugh. The, the most useless talent I have? Um, probably this, the, this thing I do with my eyes, and I'll do it now. Hopefully I don't get any screenshots. I'll probably become a meme. It's fine. Any way to make it. I'm kidding. Okay, not really. Make me a meme. So like I do this thing right here with my eyes. So like one eye is like over here. So I just kind of, this is probably offensive. I should probably stop doing that. I don't know if someone out there looks like that. So if they do, I swear to Bob, I love you. All the love. All just the in love. the interview. <laughs> just in the interview. <laughs> but I, th- I just think, I think I can't do anything with that unless I had a character that I had to play that was like that, but I don't think I would ever do that because I could potentially look like that for the rest of my life. If anyone ever just came up and was like, hey buddy, good job. And then all of a sudden my <laughs> eyes are stuck for like that for the rest of my life. That's my life. Erica, I love you. These are my thoughts. <laughs> only love, baby, only love. So much love. We love you back. <laughs> Well, we want to say thank you again for coming on and chatting with us. Uh, Honestly, I think this is the most fun I've had in an interview in a while. Um, So much laughter and talking just on a friend that I'm here for and I'm here for it. Can't wait to hear your opinions on the originals. Um, Oh, yes. I need to be updated on that because my heart can't handle it. Um, (laughs) And you got to watch One Tree Hill. Miss, oh my God. I live in North yes. Carolina and have never seen One Tree Hill. And Dawson's <laughs> Creek. I, my mom's seen Dawson's Creek. I said, when did you have the time to watch this? She was like, uh, when it came out. When, when it was, was on age. TV. I was like, I didn't need the attitude, but okay. <laughs> but yes, yes, I will exactly. update you and let you know. Yes. 